Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Unit Lost. I am Stylosa. And there is a post, ladies and gentlemen, on Reddit. Well, all over Reddit. And uh, somebody claims to have worked out the matchmaker. However, ladies and gentlemen, take this with a huge pinch of salt. This is some conspiracy level madness. And actually, you can debunk quite a lot of this. So first thing we're going to do here, guys, is I'm going to show you uh, I'm going to show you the post, right? So this is what we've got here. It says, I have finally done it. I have understood the matchmaker. It's like a hallelujah moment. I've got the answers. Finally, I understand how this works. Uh, and it must be true, right? Because it's got three Reddit gold. It has to be true. This cannot be fake. Surely this cannot be fake. Surely it is it is it is the truth because it's on the internet. Anyway, let's take a look at this first. So this is the official forums. And uh what I want to show you here is oh basically let me just hide my webcam. Whoa, there we go. I unscrambled the matchmaker algorithm. Should I reveal? And this guy's like, oh look, I've finally done it. I know how the matchmaker work, and uh, I know what's wrong with it, and I can tell you all of this. If you give me some likes, then I'll reveal this data. Blizzard say, uh, actually. While this is most likely a troll post, uh, posting internal data not available through normal gameplay is against forum conduct to get banned off the forum. So he gets banned off the forums. Well, he gets the thread locked. I don't think he's been banned off the forums, but whatever, right? Okay. Thing is here, right? This just gives validity to this post, right? Because it makes it look like, uh-oh, this guy's got the data, right? He has the answers, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to give them us now. So we're like, oh, oh, oh. So when I first come across this, i seen the post that he'd been banned off the forum. So I'm like, oh, God, maybe he's got details. Go to this thread. And then I look at this, and this is where it starts to get really dodgy, right? <laughs> really, really. And if this doesn't make you think straight away, this is just a massive, like, troll post, neckbeard, next level post. This is what he says. This long post is only for people with strong mind who want to understand the real way the matchmaker works. So remember, guys, you need a very high IQ to understand this. I must disclaimer, this is my theory based on many seasons of data, observation, testing on multiple accounts, and testing with friends. Where is this data? Never shows it us. If he showed us the data, maybe we could look at it and think, oh, okay. But this is the real kicker, right? I am very good with numbers. I can solve any kind of code or puzzle. I am very good with numbers. I can solve any kind of code or puzzle. Okay. What? I. I. Neck beard. What? That. Anyway. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt, right? And I'm just going to... I'm not going to go through all this post because it's a massive post. I'll link to it in the description below if you want to check it out. But remember, take this with a pinch of salt because this guy... I don't think he's worked out how the matchmaker works. What he's done is produced a massive post which says, um, hey, if you're losing games, these are probably reasons why you're losing games. And I think Blizzard is doing this to you to make you lose more games. But like I said, a lot of this is easily debunkable. Okay, so what he says here is true. SR equals visible rank, MMR, invisible rank that only matchmaker uses, yeah? This is true, right? Because you've got MMR, which is your internal rating, SR is your public-facing rating. The thing is, though, these two kind of want to match up. However, this guy then goes on to give examples here of SR equals 3,000, MMR equals 3,000. Now, you've got to take my word for this, guys, because I couldn't find any reference to this online, and I think this is due to conversations I've had uh, with people at Blizzard about how this works. The MMR is a massive long number. I think, actually, Jeff might have said this somewhere. Uh, as well. But MMR is not like, you will not have 3,000 SR and 3,000 MMR. You ha you might have 3,000 SR, but your MMR might be 5, 6, 7, 8, 2, 8, 9, 5, 7, 8. It's a horrifically long number because it takes loads of factors in. I almost knocked my coffee over. That would have been bad. Knocks loads and loads of factors in, right? To build an image up of your hero, of your play, of what you're doing, of your account, right? Now, of course, there are a lot of issues here. There are a lot of ways this works. This performance-based SR system, which we've been over before, which does kind of promote being a one-trick. You know, if you just keep playing the same hero over and over again and playing well, then surely you would get better at the game and win more, you know, but ah, we'll get onto that at the end of the video. So he goes through giving loads of these examples here where it's like player A and player B, like a good player and a bad player on the same teams, you know, the way that MMR works, the SR works. Um, what I'll say to this straight away is this example here where he says player B um, is basically in the same game as player A, but player A played really bad, but player B plays really, really well, he actually gets an increase in MMR above his SR level. That just seems wrong, because what about Decay? 
If any of you guys have ever been over 3K and you don't play, the, I forget how many games you need to play. I f actually, I forget. Is it like 10 games a week or something? I don't know what it is, right? Uh, I easily play more than that, so I don't really see that much decay. But I did last season, towards the end of the season, because I was traveling around all over the place. Um, I was going to uh, BlizzCon and all of that stuff. Um, however, right, I was at four point, I think it was like 4,070 SR State Bait was at the time. State Bait decayed down. Um, oh, where did he decay to? I forget where he decayed to, actually. But he decayed down anyway, right? So he was no longer at GM. Yet when I started playing games, I was still being queued with high master, high GM players. So that there, yeah, and anybody who has decayed will be able to confirm this, is proof against this, right? Your SR is not related to your MMR, really. Although they try to match them, in a way, right? They use your MMR to put you in games with other people of the same sort of SR, so you can play against them and gain SR, and, and like, so it gives you a representation of where you're going, right? So maybe you're like a good player, but you're, uh, you've decayed down to diamond, but you're actually a grandmaster player. It's not going to just put you in diamond level games. That would be silly. That's what this guy is saying. It doesn't do that, does it? It doesn't do that. So that's not, like that there, just to me, I was like, what the hell is this guy even talking about? The thing is, though, this post is designed in such a way where you look at it and think, this must be true, right? The, who would go to this, this kind of effort if it wasn't true? But people go to all kinds of efforts, right? There's a piece here as well on Blizzard's anti-smurf boost algorithm you did not know about. This is... I'm not even going to cover this because I don't think that's true at all, but whatever. So let's go to his takeaway. And I don't mean like the, the local Chinese takeaway or the Indian or whatever. This is what he says, right? And... Uh, Right, so he says, here is the big takeaway. How well you perform in your current match and the several matches before it compared to other people in the tier will determine if you get a good or bad teammate in the next matches. I just kicked something on my desk. Um, getting all gold medals just means you did better than your teammates in that game. It does not necessarily mean you did better than people in your tier. So when you get four gold medals for a few games and then are placed on an obviously outmatched team, it means you are not performing as well as other people in your tier with the hero that you use in the past several matches. It may be that you are not satisfying one of the hidden performance metrics that Blizzard is mo monitoring. So what that says, ladies and gentlemen, I'll go full screen for this. What that's saying is, guys... Um, it's not you. It's not the fact that you've played bad or you've had a bad game while you've lost SR. It's the system. And that is what this post is all about. This post is basically like everything is the system's fault. You are amazing. You should be way higher than you are. Everybody thinks this, right? You know, I think this, everybody thinks this. I'm better than I am, right? That's just a human condition. You're not going to be like, oh, I'm terrible. I'm so bad. I deserve to be here. Or what? I need to, I should be lower. Nobody thinks like that. Everybody thinks they should be better, right? This whole post is designed to just sort of Frame the system in a way where it's working against you, where it's putting you on teams where you're going to lose. But why would it even do that? It doesn't even make any sense, right? Anyway, let me carry on with this because it is kind of starting to infuriate me a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, it has to be said. Um, so this, this is the example he kept banging on about. So he says... There has been many problems. As we saw in the example, once you are placed in a match where you are favoured to lose, it is difficult to do well. The stats you are being compared with are mainly people who played in fair matches. But, but remember, you've not had fair matches, yeah? Like, how could that even be proven? Of, co of course, if you are placed in a fair match, you will do better than someone who's placed in a match they are favoured to lose. This creates a snowball effect. Now, let me tell you how you can help avoid some of these problems. Never solo queue. Solo queue makes it very easy for the matchmaker to do its poorly designed job. When you are in a group, the more people that are with you, the more difficulty it has split in the teams. So if you played well in the previous games and your MMR has got up, but your friend did not play well and his MMR went down, then it makes it more difficult for the matchmaker to push you to ranks. So, thing is here, guys, right? I... We all have bad games, yeah? I I only ever solo queue when I play this game. Now, you guys are aware of this, which is a bit weird. Like I've said before, you know, I, I should be playing with friends, right? I shouldn't just be solo queuing because it's a bit stupid, but that's what I do. I have consistently managed on every single one of my accounts to get to the same type of level, yeah? So this is around 4.1k, I'd say, on all of the accounts, right? Um, why have I done that? How have I done that? When I look at the history of the accounts, they've all played different heroes, yeah? It's not like I'm playing 
just DPS the same hero on every account. I'm not. I'm playing different heroes. I'm quite flexible. I generally don't just insta-lock heroes in and just play that hero non-stop. I will swap to what the team requires. Yeah, I always manage to get around the same level. Don't you think, guys, that that's probably my skill ceiling, yeah? Do you think? In solo queue at least, yeah? Now, admittedly, if you do duo queue, I think you've got more chance of winning because you've got one less person on your team who could be a random thrower or troll or... You, you, you at least know that person's going to try. You at least know you can communicate with that person, yeah? So there are a lot of benefits to going in a double stack or even a triple stack. Um, but the fact remains, I've always managed to get to the same level. So doesn't that tell you that over six accounts, yeah? Seven accounts, sorry now. Actually, it's eight accounts, but that eighth account, I haven't really played on that long. Um, something is working with the matchmaker, right? Because it knows it's me. And I am able to play at that level and always get to that level. So surely the matchmaker is working? Get what I'm saying? But one thing I understand is I will have bad games, yeah? And one thing I do, which I don't think a lot of people out there do do, is, in fact, I've got examples of this. Let me go over here, right? So you guys can kind of see this on the other monitor, right? So this was me saying I... Uh, let me just whip over here so I can read it. Oh, there we go. Um, I had uh, 12 games yesterday on Spitfire. And I won eight of these games on the bounce. So that is huge, right? So eight wins, that's that's awesome, right? That's getting that account like pretty close to GM because I don't think that account uh, broke into GM this season. I don't think it actually has broken to GM maybe. I don't know. But anyway, it, it's like usually ends high master, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to get this account into GM and I, I'm winning, 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 winning. These games are great. And then I lost four, but then I stopped playing. I lost four games and stopped playing. Now you might say, well, that's a bit crazy, right? Because Stai, you've played uh, eight games you've won, then you've lost the game, you've lost another game, you've lost another game, then you lost another game, then you stop playing, right? The question is, would you guys carry on playing, right? When you're on a losing streak like that after a win streak, surely you'd stop playing the game. That's the difference with me. I stop. When I start losing, I just stop playing the game. Now, you could say that's counterintuitive, right? If you want to play the game and have fun, maybe you've only got two hours a night to play the game, you're just going to slam games out, right? It doesn't matter if you lose, 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 you're just going to do it, right? But I stop playing, right? But I also noted down here why I lost in these games. And it's quite interesting. The first one, uh, sorry, the first two losses were due to disconnects, right? Uh, there was a disconnect on the first team uh, at the start of the game, just after we captured the first point, which was not great. The next game had a disconnect, which was uh, somebody who was repeatedly disconnecting and reconnecting to the game. So we had a major disadvantage there. So you could put the defeat down to that. The next one was due to a Symmetra and Torbjorn duo who were clearly trolling, ladies and gentlemen. And then the last one, this is the interesting one, yeah? This is where I think I just became tired and bad and I played a bad game. I said it was due to a thrower. But I think that thrower was me, right? Because uh, I wasn't playing very well, yeah? So I've lost and then I've gone, you know what? I'm going to stop playing now because I, uh, whatever. I, I, games have gone bad. Blame the game, whatever. I'm going to stop playing. But if you carry on playing in that state, you will lose more games. And then, you will to go back to this guy's post, right? You will then start thinking, um, well, actually, right? Uh, where does he say? Yeah. So when you get four gold medals for a few games, and then you are placed in an obviously outmatched team, uh, it means you're not performing as well as other people in your tier with that hero. So basically, like, and that's only just one example. There's tons of examples in here. Never at any point does this person take the blame. There's always somebody to blame, yeah? And I think it's very easy to put that kind of thing forward. And a lot of people will believe what you are saying when you say that, right? Which is ridiculous. But let's just give this guy the benefit of the doubt and finish his post off. Because I'm going to sit here and just, like, rip his post apart and be like, this is, doesn't make sense. Because some bits of this, you know... Uh, can kind of make sense, like particularly this bit here. So he says, the other problem is there are things that can be done in a match that are very beneficial but are not seen as productive by the matchmaker. For instance, Farah spamming a turret and getting low damage, output and low kills, she helped win the game but was punished and the next game was placed <laughs> a rank down. Right, I'm just going to put this to bed once and for all. So if you play well, regardless of whatever hero you're playing, you'll win the game. What happens when you win the game, you gain SR, yeah? So if you keep playing well, you keep gaining SR. Okay, true. That's true. That's absolutely true. Um, what this is saying here is, but Farah has spammed the turret down. Didn't really get any kills, but destroyed the Torbjorn turret. That, that meant we could win the game, right? Okay, maybe it did. 
Farrah goes into the next game. There isn't a turret in the next game. But Farrah doesn't play very well and loses. Would it be fair to say that spamming a turret down as Farrah is a very easy thing to do? But actually playing a full game as Farrah when you've got no experience of the hero will be very difficult. Not, It doesn't even have to be Farrah. You could be playing a different hero. In fact, there's millions of different factors in Overwatch which can affect the outcome of the game. It is very easy for... You know, and I was guilty of this a little bit, you know, because I play a lot of tank characters. I could say, like, um, actually, this isn't fair because I'm making space for DPS. But maybe I'm making space for DPS by diving in like crazy. Maybe, yeah, I make space, but I die instantly because my positioning's bad. Maybe my use of my barrier is not great as Winston. Uh, maybe I'm not jumping correctly. Maybe, you know, there's some sort of issue, and I'm dying a lot. I'm not actually doing anything. I'm just feeding and dying, right? So our team lose the game. That's not because the DPS were bad. That's because I was bad. I just wish that this is like a cultural thing. No, it's not a cultural thing. It's just a human thing, right? Everybody looks to blame everybody else. Rank does not matter, right? Listen to me now. It does not matter. What matters is you becoming a better player. When you become a better player, so you focus on things that will make you win more games, so you focus on your positioning, your target priority, your hero selection, your communication, your tactics, your plan, your job, all of this stuff, right? You will win more games and you will increase in rank. If that doesn't show you the matchmaker is working, then I don't know what is, yeah? We all go on win streaks. We all go on loss streaks. I cannot make that any more clearer than this. This post on the forum, or, well, on Reddit, is just a lot of saying the right thing so people feel who are not putting in the effort, not putting in the time to make themselves better players, have an excuse to go, well, actually, it's the matchmaker that's screwing me over. It's not. Because if the matchmaker was screwing you over, you would not be at the rank you're at, right? Think about that, yeah? You're screwing yourself over. Go away from this video. Go away from this stupid post and be like, I'm going to play to be better at this game. When I start losing games, why am I losing games? Sometimes you might lose the game because the enemy were just better than you. That's fine, right? Whatever. Learn from your, your mistakes. Move on. But then if you start losing another game and another game, you've lost four games, maybe you should stop playing them. Yes, it might be throws. Yes, it might be trolls. But you are starting to tilt. This happens to everybody. You should stop playing, yeah? That's what you should do. You will become a better player if you do that. Focus on yourself, ladies and gentlemen. This has turned into like a crazy motivational speech at the end of this. But it, th this is... This is... Try not to look for excuses, right? Just try to solve stuff. Be like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get better at this game. Anyway, right, just to, just to finally wrap this up. You can see the rest of this post. There's a lot of stuff here. Loads of stuff. Like, it gives various couple of, like, questions and stuff. You can go and read it. Go and make your own mind up for it. I know I've just sat here and presented a very strong argument, uh, like, against this. But please make your own mind up. Go crazy in the comments below. Let me know what you think about all of this, ladies and gentlemen. It is, it is an interesting debate to have. But remember, just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true. And just because it's on Reddit and it's got, uh, you know, three golds also doesn't mean... That it's true. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Salosa and this is Unit Lost. If you enjoyed the video, then like the video. You can subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Twitter, which is at Unit Lost Gaming. Follow me on Twitch as well, which is twitch.tv forward slash Unit Lost. Uh, join the Discord, which is discord.gg forward slash Unit Lost. And I will catch you on the next one, guys. Toodaloo.